Hello students, this is your English lesson. Students, today we will read unit number 3 from Oxford Reading Circle 6. So we start our lesson. The title of the unit is Deedless and Egress. You know about these two personalities? I think you don't know. In Greek mythology, Daedalus was a skillful architect and craftsman and was seen as a symbol of wisdom, knowledge and power. Icarus In Greek mythology, Icarus was the son of the master craftsman Daedalus. Let's get started. Many hundreds of years ago, there was a king called Minos. He was the ruler of an island called Crete, which lies to the south of Greece in Europe. King Minos was not only wise, but just. He ruled his country with a firm hand but he was fair. When the Greeks ventured to Crete, they were most impressed with this monarch and came to admire him greatly. Monarch means a sovereign head of state. How was he is, they proclaimed, and in time, the king himself came to believe this. He felt he was not only the wisest king in the world, but also the wisest of all men. It came to pass that King Minos heard about one of his subjects. The man's name was Daedalus, and indeed he was not knowledgeable in diverse ways. He was a builder and a designer. He had invented things which helped people to do their work more efficiently. He had designed a saw with which large trees could be cut and he had invented a potter's wheel. Potters no longer had to spend hours fashioning their vases and pots by hand, using a spatula to beat and smoothen the sides. With the wheel, they could slap down a lump of clay in the middle, lump piece, spin the wheel round and then draw the clay out gently with their fingers, shaping it into any cylindrical form. Their work could now be done with greater ease. Sailors blessed Daedalus for teaching them how to rig sails, rig equip, rig sails for their vessels. With these new sails, they could travel farther and more swiftly to explore all the islands that dotted the blue sea around Crete. This man must truly be skillful and wise, thought King Minos. When he heard about all these inventions, let us see if he can build me a labyrinth. Labyrinth, a complicated, irregular network of passages or paths. King Minos sent for Daedalus and asked him to design a labyrinth from which no man could escape. It must be so cleverly designed, charged the king, that only those who know the secret may get out of it. I shall do my best, replied Daedalus humbly and sat to work immediately. Daedalus and his young son, Icarus, spent many months designing and building the labyrinth. 
When it was complete, it was truly the greatest maze in the world. It contained many rooms, both large and small, connected by numerous winding passages and turning, opening one into another. The labyrinth covered a vast expanse of land and seemed to have no beginning or end. Daedalus had excelled himself, but the king was not pleased. Perhaps it was precisely because, precisely in exact term, because Daedalus had been so successful and so clever that the king turned against him. Daedalus and Icarus were shut up in a tower at one end of the island, and there they stayed, looking out to sea each day, lamenting, lamenting, express regret, their lost freedom, lamenting their lost freedom. There was little means of escape from the tower, and certainly no way off the island. The king had posted guards at every turn, and every ship traveling to and from the island was watched carefully. King Minos controls the land and sea, said Daedalus to his son one day. Even if we can break out of this prison, we shall not be able to escape from the island. Certainly not by land or sea, Father, said Icarus, gazing out of the window at the girls, swooping over the bay, bay a broad inlet of the sea. But perhaps we can try to do so through the air. I wish we had wings like those girls, then we could simply fly away. Deedless said nothing in reply, but nodding wisely and thinking about what his son had said, he came and stood by him at the window to wash the gods. Later that day, Daedalus and Icarus found a way out of the tower. Come with me, my son, said Daedalus. We have much work to do if we are to be truly free. When they had emerged from their prison cell and had descended the tower, Daedalus said Icarus to work. We shall make ourselves wings, he said, and with them we shall leave this island. It is our only solution. But how are we to make wings? asked the puzzled boy. I will show you, replied the father. But first we must collect feathers, many feathers. The father led the sun towards the rocks on the seashore. The coastal rocks were used by the seabirds for their nesting grounds. There were feathers galore all over the shore, galore in large number. During the weeks that followed, walking amongst the rocks at dusk and after nightfall, Father and son began to make a collection of the finest feathers they could find. By day, out of view of the watchful eyes of the guards, they began to weave the feathers together. Daedalus had no tools to work with, save for a needle that he always wore in his tunic. Tunic is the garment for the body. With this and with... Threads plucked carefully from an old blanket, he began to sew together the larger feathers to bind the softer, more delicate feathers. Daedalus melted and used the wax of old candles. The feathers were built up, layer upon layer, and shaped to resemble the wings of a giant bird. Very soon, Four enormous wings had been fashioned from the feathers. Today we can finally try out our wings, said Daedalus, one sunny day. Look, 
the sea is calm and the clouds idle along the breeze is by no means strong didless took up one great wing in either arm and mounted carefully to the first level of the tower balancing himself on the very edge of a parapet parapet a low protecting wall along the edge of a roof he slipped his arms through the delicate straps and loops on the wings and clasped them firmly in his grip for a moment he stood on the edge of the balcony and slowly and steadily began to flap his wings then when a soft breeze began to blow aiding his efforts aiding helping he leapt from the tower didelis flapped frantically frantically in a horrid manner as he fell and then as he as if born a lot a loft a loft high up high up by the gods he was soaring and gliding like a bird round the tower he went with his young son cheering his progress over the next few days father and son practiced taking off and landing very soon they became quite skilled at this and came to understand how a fledging 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 baby bird fledging could learn this so naturally they were soon flying around and round the tower with great ease when the day of their departure and flight to freedom dawned didelus cautioned his son ikras my son want he listen with great care to what i have to say for you will live or die by my words you have the wings of a bird but they were not fashioned by the gods they were made by you and me and we are but mortal fly not too low for the mists of the sea will envelop you they will clog your wings clogs block and you may will you may well lose your way fly not too high either for we have used wax to bind the feathers of our wings the wax will surely melt if the heat of the sun is too great and who knows what might happen then follow me closely keep near and you will be safe have you understood this advice i have father replied the boy as he eagerly picked up his wings i shall do exactly as you bade me didless assisted the boy in fastening his wings fastening lock but his fingers trembled with fear a perilous journey a perilous journey a perilous full of danger lay ahead of them as he took up his own wings he glanced lovingly at the boy his eyes filled with tears when he realized that he might never see his son again didless made his way to the edge of the parapet ahead of his son he flapped his wings and leapt into the air he rose up and up higher and higher in the blue sky he turned to look as a mother bird would have done to watch her fledging take to the skies ikras had learned his lesson well for he was soon rising gracefully into the air didelus heaved a great sigh of relief as the boy gained height and followed his path father and son were soon soaring over the fields of the island far down below them they could see the plowmen and shepherds stop in their work to gaze and marvel at the strange winged creatures of the air behold it is apollo cried a shepherd in of of wonder as they swooped by yes yes replied his father excitedly it is indeed 
Apollo and see he is followed by Cupid. Father and son flew on, farther and farther, till they were over the sea. Daedalus chuckled, chuckled, laughed inwardly, and as he winged over the blue waters and watched the ships far below. King Minos cannot stop us now, my son, he cried in joy and turned to a certain, a certain find out for certain, a certain the position of his son. But Icarus was now here to be seen in the celebration of his freedom and his new found skill and with every movement of his wings the youth was now soaring high above his father heading dangerously closer to the sun Didylus circled round and round casting his eyes below icarus where are you he screamed but there was no response and then he looked into the sparkling sky above Icarus, he cried with all his might, Icarus, beware, you fly too high, remember my words, calm down, calm down. But the boy did not hear him, he had already gained too much height, and now the wax in his feathered wings began to melt and soften. As Deedless watched, small plumes began to drop from the wings of Icarus and float in the air. Soon, larger feathers fluttered and became detached and floated gently down, down, down. Icarus flapped more vigorously, vigorously with effort, with energy, and began to kick his feet in panic. Panic? Sudden, uncomfortable fear. But it was all to no avail. The boy plummeted plummeted fall down at high speed towards the sea like a dying comet and was enveloped by the blue waters below all that remained were some feathers floating on the gentle waves now come to the exercises a questions one why did the greeks admire king minus answer King Minos was admired for his wisdom and how fairly he ruled his kingdom. 2. Explain how Didylus was inventive. Answer. Didylus invented many things to make people's lives easier, such as a saw and a potter's wheel. Eventually, he made wings to escape the prison King Minos had put him in. 3. Do you think King Minos was being just when he imprisoned Daedalus and Icarus? Give reasons for your answer. Answer. No, I do not think King Minos was being just because he was jealous of Daedalus and Icarus. Maybe he was worried that they would challenge his rule in the future. He should have rewarded them and made them his trusted friends. 4. Why did Daedalus caution his son before they made their flights? Answer. Daedalus cautioned Icarus about the dangers that might beset them on their flight in the hope that he would take care not to fly low enough to lose his way or too high to melt his wings. 5. The shepherd and his friend mistook the father and son as Apollo and Cupid. If you had a chance to interview the Jew, father and son, what questions would you ask them? Answer. If I had a chance to interview the Jew, I would ask them some of these questions. What are your ages? What do where do you live? What kind of food do you eat? Can ordinary humans fly like you? 6. What do you think happened to Icarus in the end? And why did it happen? Answer. I think 
Icarus drowned in the sea and died. He met the sad and because he had not obeyed his father by flying low. He did not have the wisdom to avoid flying too near the sun, which would melt the wax. When he sensed the danger, it had been too late. 7. Had you been in Daedalus and his son's place, what escape plan would you have devised? Give details of your plan. Answer. I would have tied up the feathers into a strong rope to lower ourselves down from the tower at night. On the island, we would hide from the guards to secretly build a raft and return to the tower before morning. Once the raft was ready, we would escape the island at night. B. Reference to context. Read these lines from the story and then answer the questions. 1. It must be so cleverly designed that only those who know the secret may get out of it. A. Who says these words and to whom? Answer. King Minus to Daedalus. B. What is the speaker referring to? Answer. The labyrinth he had asked Daedalus to construct. C. Is the feature constructed? Answer. Yes, but not to Minus satisfaction. 2. With this and with threads plucked carefully from an old blanket, he began to sew together the larger feathers. A. Who is at work here and when is he working? Answer. Daedalus by day out of view of the watchful eyes of the guards. B. What is he making? Answer. Wings for himself and his son. C. What is referred to in the statement as this? Answer. The needle that he always wore in his tunic. C. Choose the best response. 1. King Minus turned against Daedalus because, because Daedalus was successful. 2. The idea to build wings came from Icarus. 3. Daedalus warned Icarus not to fly too high because the wax would melt. D. Words and meaning. Arrange these words according to their intensity. 1. Walk, throat, canter, gallop. 2. Large, huge, enormous, massive, gigantic. 3. Small, tiny, minute, minuscule. Minuscule, microscopic. 4. Alarming, formidable, frightening, terrifying, horrific. 5. Sugared, sweet, syrupy, sickly. 6. Shaded, dim, dark, gloomy, murky. Thanks for listening. For new videos, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you like my videos, please share and like.